talking about energy. Energy is every single thing that we do. Um, well, there's two different types of energy reactions, and we endothermic and exothermic. So energy is always measured in joules or calories. I hope everyone's heard of calories before. It's what we burn our energy, and that's what our food is measured in. A joule can be abbreviated with a capital J, and calories abbreviated C A L. So a joule again is type of energy, a calorie type of energy, and you should be associated with this because of our food that we eat always measured in calories. Um, every reaction is going to have a change associated with it. Something is going to change. That's why it's a chemical reaction. If energy is released, it's called an exothermic reaction. Exothermic reactions releases heat is energy is released, so therefore it will get hot. Endothermic reactions are going to absorb energy. So these are when they're going to get cold. So energy can be is stored between the bonds of atoms. So it's stored between like in water, between hydrogen and oxygen. And they can be then released in the form of different types of energies. They can be released in a calorie, which is a capital C-A-L, which is equal to one kilocalorie, lowercase l, which is equal to a thousand calories, lowercase l. I know this capital K and little, or capital C and lowercase c are going to be a little confusing, so you look out for that, and they are actually a thousand things different. Um, one calorie is also, one little calorie, is also equal to 4.184 joules, again, we have J, and one calorie is a dietary calorie, which is what we eat every day, and that would be a big C, so a thousand little Cs. All right, this right here is a chart of a combination reaction. A combination reaction, again, is where you take two elements and you bond them together. This is when we're taking carbon and oxygen and making carbon dioxide. Carbon is all by itself because it is not a hot wrinkle. Oxygen has two of them because, again, it's a hot wrinkle, and they're coming together to make CO2. You'll see that we also have this energy that is being released. This is a measured in kilojoules. This is simply a type of energy, just like before. So kilo is prefix for a thousand. Remember, for every, every time you have kilo, so this would be a thousand joules equals one kilojoule. Right here I'm saying this is the react, these are the raw reactants. Here are reactants, and they're starting off at this higher energy level. So on our little chart here, we have energy clear up here, and our reactants are here, and as they move towards the products, their energy level gets lower. Therefore, we have this energy released, and that energy that's being released from our reactants to our products is 395 kilojoules. So this energy is coming off. That's where we feel our heat, and when we touch it, it gets warmer. So this energy is coming off of it. This is what we call, again, is an exothermic reaction. When products are lower in energy than the reactants were. So again, they're lower. This releases energy, and they get hot. Here is another chart where we have a different reaction. We have a decomposition reaction this time. This time we're taking some elements right here, and we're breaking them down into the individual groups. Calcium carbonate, calcium is a cation, this is a polyatomic ion, and they'll break up to be CO2 and another ionic compound. So as you'll notice, calcium carbonate is on a lower energy level, and then calcium oxide and carbon dioxide are at a higher energy level. It actually requires energy to make this reaction happen. You have to add heat to it for this reaction to happen. You have to add 176 kilojoules base reaction occur and move forward. When we do this, this is called an endothermic reaction. This is something that will absorb energy. Again, if it absorbs energy, it can get colder. We have to add heat to it to make it move faster. Um, the products are higher in energy than the reactant, so this is just the opposite of the one before. So, chemistry. Why this happen? We want to talk about how this relates to our most favorite friend, moles. We love moles. Again, moles is always our lowercase n. So, n, moles, same thing. Um, an equation that's going to include energy is called a thermochemical equation. This is where we're going to have our kilojoules added into our energy. It's either being released or being added. If it's on the product side, this means this was made. This was made. If it's on our reactant side, it means it's required to move forward. So here what we're saying is if we have one mole of, C of methane, CH4, methane, CH4, when we can make 802.2 or 
802 kilojoules. Therefore, if we also, if we make 802 kilojoules, we can also make two moles of water. So it's just, again, that ratio of when we're looking at our balanced chemical equation of what would be happening. Let's go ahead and try a problem. So our first problem is we're going to do a combustion reaction. I know this is a combustion reaction because I'm taking a carbohydrate and an oxygen and I'm making CO2 and water. And imagine that a combustion reaction gives off heat. So just like our cars give off heat, we give off heat. We're going to have our combustion reaction will give off heat as well. It's going to give off 802.2 kilojoules. So let's say we start with 10.3 grams of CH4 are burned completely. How much heat would be produced? What we need to do first is we need to figure out how many moles of CH4 we have. The equation we're going to use, we need to have N equals G all over MWT. Again, N is moles, G is grams, and then the molecular weight. So we're going to take 10.3 grams, and let's go ahead and grab the molecular weight of CH4. Carbon is 12.01, and hydrogen is 1.01, and we have four of those. So we would have plus 4.04 gives us 16.05. So we're going to take our 10.3 divided by 16.05. I'm going to give a little calculator so I can do this. We will get 0 0.62, no, 6.42 moles, using my sig fig, of CH4. And we know that for every one mole of CH4, that will equal 802.2 kilojoules. So we can use this equivalent statement to write a conversion factor to make this mole go to joules, kilojoules. So we're going to put our moles of CH4 on bottom so that our moles can cancel. And then we're going to put our 802.2 kilojoules on top. So when our moles of CH4 will cancel, and then we're going to take our 0 .6, 0 0.642, and we'll times that by 802.2, and we'll be left with 514.5450, six eights, round it up. 515 kilojoules will be our final answer here. That's how much heat we're going to make when we burn 10.3 grams. I think we have two more examples. So this is the same reaction that's happening. We're doing our combustion of methane still. We just have a few different types of questions to ask. So this time, they were asking how many liters of O2 at STP. Oh my goodness. We're going to talk about STP in a little bit. STP is our best friend in the whole world. It means standard temp. Wow. Standard temp and pressure. This is where we can use, we can't, we don't have to use PV equals NRT anymore. Here we can use N equals L all over 22.4. This should make your day. You do not have to, you don't have to use PV equals NRT. It's our best friend. So now how many liters of O2 we would be able to make if we made 20 kilojoules of heat? So what we have to do is we're going to take our kilojoules, convert to moles, and then convert to our liters. So we're going to start with 23 kilojoules. And we know we have 802.2 kilojoules equals 2 moles of O2. So we're going to go ahead and write that in our, as our equivalent statement, let's write our conversion factor. So we're going to write 802 on the bottom, so our kilojoules will cancel, and we'll be left with moles on top, so we're going to put our 2 moles of O2 on top. So we're going to take our 23, and we're going to divide it by 802. 0.2. I'll be left with 0 0.029 moles of O2. Now we have our moles of O2, we have to apply it to this equation to get our liters. So we're going to set this equal to L all over 22.4. And how we solve this problem is we're going to times both sides by 22.4. So our 22.4 over here will cancel. And we will get our answer. Our answer should be 0 
we do that, we will have our answer is moles. We're going to take 506 divided by 802. I made a mistake. Hold on, just a little bit. 802, and then we're going to times that answer by 2. That will give us 1.26. So up here, I forgot about this 2 moles. So I'll come back and fix that in a minute. Um, here, we had to divide by 102 and then times by 2, and I forgot to times by 2 up here. But we'll have that up here. So we'll have moles of H2O. And once we have our moles of H2O, then we're going to times by the molecular weight to get our grams. And water is 18.02, oxygen 16, hydrogen is 1.01, we have two of those. So our answer here should be 22.7. Please ask me in class. See you next time.